I'm Demian, a web ecosystem consultant at Google. In this talk, you will learn how to define an install strategy across all your mobile experiences. Letting your users install your app is one of the best ways to keep them engaged. Today, you can achieve that in different ways. Let's start with native app installs. If you have a native application, you might think that this might be the best platform to promote to all your users. And for some of them, this might be true. But for some users, native apps can have some disadvantages too. The most common one is storage constraints. Making space for a new app might mean removing valuable content. Freeing app storage is also the number one reason users remove apps from their devices. There's also the issue of available bandwidth, especially for users on slow connections and expensive data plans. Finally, moving to a store creates additional friction and delays a user action that could be performed directly in the web. A great alternative to this is allowing users to install your progressive web app from the browser through an add to home screen prompt. You can also upload your PWA to the Play Store using trusted web activity. In this example, Quinto Andar, a real estate company from Brazil, was able to reuse the same code base in the web and the Play Store while offering a great experience to users. Let's take a look at another example. Oyo Rooms is one of the largest hospitality companies in India. They have a very large user base coming from a variety of devices and networks. They have built different versions of their mobile experience to satisfy the needs of all their users. First, they created a native application for the Play Store. For the most sophisticated users, this could be the best choice. Oyo Lite is a progressive web app, uploaded to Play Store via trusted web activity. It provides the same functionality of the native app while occupying only 7% of the space. Finally, for users that visit the site directly by typing the URL or clicking on a link, Oyo offers a chance of installing the PWA directly from the home screen. Having all these ways to achieve app installs is great. But how can you combine all these offerings to increase installation rates while avoiding making your apps compete with each other? Let's discuss some strategies to combine different install offerings. The first strategy is to show the different options in the same screen. This is a simple approach that might just work for many users. The challenge is to be able to communicate the value proposition to distinguish clearly one from the other. But instead of delegating the choice completely to users, we can make the life easier. The idea of the following strategies is to make some inferences. For example, by tracking users' behavior and device characteristics. We call these heuristic-based approaches. The first one is web install as fallback. In this strategy, you can start showing the native app install prompt. If the user doesn't install the app and keeps visiting to your website, chances are that the web is their platform of choice. After a while, you can start promoting your PWA to these users. This strategy can be implemented very easily. For example, by using cookies to track user behavior. The group of users that dismiss the app banner and get coming several times to the site might be good candidates for a web install offering. But before showing the web install call to action, there are two more things to take into account. The first one, make sure that the user hasn't already installed your native app or your PWA by other means. The Get Install Related Apps API can help you check that. The second is actually a UX best practice. To maximize the opt-in rate for your web install prompts, you might want to use the double permission pattern. In this example, Oyo shows a web install icon after capturing the before install prompt event. When the user clicks on it, they trigger the standard add to home screen prompt. If you want to learn about UX patterns for web permissions like this one, check Pichet's talk, Safe Permissions for the Capable Web at Cron Dev Summit 2019. Let's move now to the second strategy. Intuitively, users on slow networks or low-end devices might be more inclined to download light apps. Therefore, if it's possible to identify a user's device, one could prioritize the light app over the heavier native app installed version. You can implement this by writing a function, checking for device characteristics to decide which prompt to show. If it's a low-end device, a light app. 
And if it's a high-end device, you can offer the core native app. Inside the function, device signals can be obtained in two ways. The first one is by using JavaScript APIs, like device memory, hardware concurrency, or the network information API. The second one is by using client hints, which can be inferred from the header of the HTTP request. To use them, you need to send an accept CH header in your response, indicating the type of hints you want to receive. For example, device memory. After that, you will start receiving these hints in the header of the HTTP request. Finally, you can use this information to map to a device category and use that later to decide which prompt to show. If you want to learn techniques on how to map device signals to device categories, check out Adaptive Loading, a talk that was given at Cron Dev Summit 2019. Wrapping up, today you can offer different channels to users to install your mobile experiences. For example, you could offer a native app, a PDL available in the Play Store, and a web install from the user screen. Then you can define a heuristic to show the most suitable install offering to a particular user. You can create a very simple one based on the user behavior on your site. For example, by tracking how often they come to it. Or you can go for a more sophisticated approach by mapping device signals to device categories and show different install offerings, depending if the device is low, mid, or high-end. We encourage you to experiment with these techniques, for example, by running A-B tests and to reach out to us on Twitter to share your experiences. I hope you continue enjoying WebDev Live. Thanks for watching.